So do you find any uh, moments yesterday where you pushed back against the kingdom of God, where you, you tried to rub up and make something happen that the world wasn't designed to do? Usually that happens when we make decisions, right? Either in our heart or how we treat somebody else or decisions we make about our corporate culture. Uh, because you can't, you can't deny reality in the kingdom of God, right? You, you can't uh, break a pattern of how something works. You can kill it and stop it, but you can't break its pattern. The only way you can break a pattern is through the decisions you make. Right? So you can do God's pattern for your life in relationship to your dog is to be loving and to care for it and to be a good steward of it and treat it and have a camaraderie, but have a care and compassion for it. If you kick your dog and you kick it over and over and over and over again, it's an individual decision that you've made that breaks a pattern of how God created the world to be. I don't imagine any of you did that. We kick a dog, we love our dogs. That's for sure, I love mine. And I enjoy being out here in Montana with little Minnie and let her swim in the Yellowstone River. It's great fun. And she loves it. Anyway, Jesus is with Pilate. We'll pick up uh, chapter uh, 18, verse 34. When Pilate says, so you're a king. And Jesus answered, you say that I'm a king. For I was born for this. And for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. So I was born and I came into the world to testify to the truth. Well, what is that? Again, it's simply pointing out the reality of the world. Where God is, that God made for our blessing. That's the truth. And then how do you live in that? Right? Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. So we want to belong to the truth, living in the kingdom of God. We pattern match our life as Jesus would live it if he had this life. And Pilate says, what is truth? Pilate doesn't understand that because Pilate pattern matches his life to the wrong things, to power and authority, to his decision or the decision of Caesar. It's the false god. It's the idol. When we pattern match our life to an idol, then we're outside the patterns of the kingdom of God. Let's read on. Verse, the end of third, verse 38. After Jesus had said this, and after Pilate had said this, he went out to the Jews again, and he told them, I find no case against Jesus. But you have a custom that I release someone for you at Passover. Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? And they shouted in reply, not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a bandit. So, so we have this thing going on, right? That uh, the Jews are trying to get Pilate to condemn Jesus to death. Pilate that doesn't see any reason why, to do, why he should do the dirty work of the Jewish community that can't get along with itself anyway. And so he's not going to step into that trap. Uh, and then he gives them a way to save face. He says, listen, uh, here's an opportunity for you to just wipe the slate clean, let this guy Jesus go. I don't find any fault with him. And we walk away and everything is okay. But they say, no, let us have Barabbas, the bandit. The rebel. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged, and the soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they dressed him in a purple robe. It was a game they played, the king's game they called it, and they would pick one prisoner, and they would mock him and flog him and humiliate him uh, in front of each other, and there was, it was a dice game. They made some money on it. I don't quite exactly understand how that worked. And they kept coming up to him and saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and striking him on the face. And Pilate went out again, and he said to the Jews, the Sanhedrin who was there, Look, I, I bring him out to you to let you know that I find no case against him. Right? Jesus didn't crack. Jesus didn't cry. Jesus took the abuse. And, and Pilate says, Maybe that's enough. Maybe that will satisfy them. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, and Pilate said to them, Here's the man. And the chief priests and the police saw him, and they shouted, Crucify him, crucify him. And Pilate said to them, Take him yourself and crucify him, though they couldn't, right, because that was against the law of the Jews. I find no case against him. And the Jews answered him, We have a law, and according to the law he ought to die, because he claims to be the Son of Man. Right? But they can't do it through crucifixion. Now, when Pilate heard this, he was more afraid than ever. You see, it's interesting. 
there was something about Jesus that caused Pilate to believe that he had some insight, wisdom, into the nature of God. Pilate understood power. Pilate knew how to apply power. He knew power when he saw it, and he saw in Jesus something that was most extraordinary, that caused him to quake. When the Jews said, he's calling himself the Son of God, Pilate understood in a moment that maybe there was something there, that maybe he was the Son of God. Whether Jesus was Pilate's friend or not, enemy or not, foreigner or from a different tribe or not, he understood power. Because Jesus had this deep rootedness to God. You have the same power. You have that same rootedness to God. Right? And you access it when you worship God. You access it when you pray. You access it when you study the Holy Scripture. And so this is what I'm wondering. Between today and tomorrow, when you pray, wonder at your power source. Put your finger on it. And see where God is calling you to A, know it, know your power, where it comes from, and B, to express it. I'd love to hear about it sometime. Send me an email if you'd like. But know that you're in my prayers. Know that I love you. Peace upon your soul.